Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In my last video on missing value imputation techniques, you guys gave lot of likes and lot of comments. A big thank you to all of you for that. And this is a subsequent video of that video only. This is part two, where I'll be showing you the practical demonstration of all missing value imputation technique that I was explaining in that video. This is the power of your comment and your feedback guys that I know what to create and what not to create. So please go ahead and put the comments in this video as well so that I know if it was on to the expectation. So let's go to my screen and I'll show you what all imputation techniques are available in Python and how we can implement it. Okay. So guys, what I'm going to explain you here is multiple varieties of imputation. Okay. And then how to do that in Python, for example, iterative imputation, then I will tell you what is mice that is multiple imputation by chain equation. I'll tell you model based imputation. I will tell you list wise deletion and some simple imputation. So how I am going is I'm uh, starting from the uh, difficult ones, little difficult to understand. And then I'm going to easy ones. Okay. So first thing that you need to understand guys is something known as iterative imputation. Okay. So this image I have created to explain you what is iterative imputation. Try to understand this guys because this concept is used in multiple imputation too much. Okay. So iterative imputation means imputation will not happen once. It will happen in an iterative way many times. For example, suppose this is your input data. Okay. Now, how many values you can see blank in your input data guys? One value in height here. Second value in height here one value in years of experience, one value in salary. Okay. Suppose this is your total data. So how iterative imputation will work is, first of all, it will treat one column as a target column and two columns as independent column or fit a model. Okay. So you can see here, these blue ones are the target column and these, this color, right? Little orange kind of color. This color is a independent features. Okay. This is step one. Okay. In step one, suppose the model predicts these two blank values at A and B. Okay. Then what happens in next step is the second column, you can see here blue, right? This will become the target column. These two will become independent column and this will be predicted as C, for example. And in the third step, these two will be made as independent and this salary will be made as target and D will be the prediction. Once this happens for all the columns, right? Then we will have a final data set, right? This final data set will be compared with the basic mean imputed data set. So you can see here on the bottom, this is a mean imputed data set. So from this original data, one mean imputed data set is created in the advance. Okay. Once all the features are filled, all the columns are predicted then this final result will be computed with mean imputed result and then that difference will be observed okay this difference will be tried to minimize in the next iteration so i'm say, saying here compare and iterate this kind of imputation is known as iterative approach of imputation so what is happening in first iteration we are taking all the column one by one trying to predict for that and then the final data right we are comparing with mean imputation to see how close or how far is that. This is one iteration. In the next iteration, what will happen? Again, these things will repeat. Again, this will be um, compared with the mean imputation. Again, repeat, again, uh, compare, okay? This kind of uh, imputation is known as iterative imputation because it is in iteration. Many times it's happening, okay? How to do that in Python? You have something known as iterative imputer so first i'm importing uh, my my data okay so this is how my data looks like if you see here i am knowingly put uh, some values as na so i have height i have years of experience and i have salary okay so nan 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 means uh, these values are missing so two values in height are missing one in years of experience and one in salary okay this is again a employee data for example you can say and the reason you are seeing 0 0.0 is because at the moment NAN comes in the data, Python thinks all these are float values and hence by default it's converting to float. Okay. So don't bother about that. Just see missing values NAN, NAN, NAN. Okay. 
Now, how to impute a plain, simple iterative imputer on this is you go here and you say import numpy from sklearn.experimental import enable iterative imputer. Okay. And then you say from sklearn.impute impute, impute iterative imputer. Then you take a model of your choice. Okay. Here I'm taking linear regression, initialize linear regression object, then call the iterative, iterative imputer, give your estimator as linear regression. What is your missing value? So in this case, np.nan, how many iteration you want to run? What is your imputation order? Imputation order means left to right or right to left column wise you want to go. And then you can run this. So let me run this in front of you once. So if I run this right, you will see that early stopping criteria is, I will tell you what is early stopping. And uh, how many iterations? Fine, five iterations it reached, okay. And then your missing values are imputed. If you see here, this is your imputed data. Now, now you will not be seeing any NAN here, okay. So this is a iterative imputer. Remember this guys, iterative imputer. How did you do that? You imputed something known as iterative imputing in Python, iterative imputer, and they did this. All the columns were um, at one point of time, all the column was target and rest what individual feature. Another point of time, one column was target, others were individual feature, step by step manner. Once all the columns are predicted, we call that one iteration. And then uh, that is compared with the default prediction, default imputation. And you know, it is tries to be optimized. This is called as your iterative imputer in Python, you can use it. Some interesting options in iterative imputers are, for example, initial strategy. Uh, like I told you right here, uh, it is initially mean imputer. So this you can change using initial strategy parameter. Okay. And imputation order, right? I am saying here Roman. Roman means left to right. So I want to first, you know, take my first column as my target. In the second uh, step, I want to take my second column as the target, and so on and so forth. You can make it Arabic, and it will go like this: last column as the first, uh, you know, uh, target variable, and so on and so forth. So, how many imputed data you are seeing here? One result, one output. Understand the difference. This is not a multi imputation. Okay, this is a single imputation, not a multiple imputation. Iterative, but single. Single means it will give you only one value, only one imputed value. Okay, in the end, this is your in the end imputed value. Fine. Now, suppose I want to have something known as multiple imputation. Multiple imputation means I want to have, like I was seeing you in the theory video, right? Uh, multiple versions of the imputation. So one imputation, one data, second imputation, second data, third imputation, third data, right? So there is a package in Python known as mice, uh, not mice, mice is a R package basically. Python package is known as mice forest, okay? So what mice forest will do is, it will impute five different data sets. For example, I'm saying your data set is equal to five, right? It will give you five different imputations for one, uh, one missing value, okay? How do you run this? Of course, if you don't have this package, you need to have this package, okay? I'm reading my data and I'm saying imputation kernel. I'm saying take my data, give me five data sets, save all my iterations, means save all my results, random state just to regenerate. And then I'm running the mice algorithm. So if you can see here, it's running now. And then um, you can see what is your different data. For example, how many iterations I have run now? Five. So uh, I'm seeing the what is my last iteration imputation. You can see here by four I'm seeing. What is my second last by three I'm seeing. What is my first imputation? This I'm seeing. But which data I will use for my model building? Which data I will be my final data, right? In multiple imputation scenario. So you have to combine. In this case, I have combined using a mean. You can combine using median. I mean, you are taking median of those imputed values, right? So like this, you can compute. And then in the final result, right, you will be able to see that there are imputed values. So what I'm doing, I'm taking all those, uh, you know, multiple imputed data sets, combining it using mean. This is your final data that you can use for the analysis. Okay. So what all I explained you till now, guys, I explained you what is a simple iterative imputer, how to do that in Python, what is a mice mice is in r basically multiple imputation by chain equation mice full form okay so this also internally uses iterations 
as I was giving number of iterations here, right? So it is saying me how many iterations I'm running, six iterations it's running, right? So it will give you multiple data sets for, you know, multiple imputed data sets. In the final end, we can take one final data set, okay? So these are two important uh, approach and these are useful also. So missing at random and not missing at random, both, both categories, it is useful, both these, okay? Now, model-based imputation, I want to tell you that there is something known as KNN imputer in sklearn. You just take your data, you kind of sklearn.impute, you can simply impute KNN imputer. And in KNN imputer, you can tell how many KNN, if you are having some idea of KNN, right, it's nearest neighbor algorithm. Where you tell that I want to impute this value, whoever is nearer to this person, take that value and kind of take the reference from that value, right? So I'm running KNN imputer on the same data and you will see that the imputation value is slightly different from the previous one. You see here fifth value is 12.5 and in previous one, fifth value is a little different, right? In our mice imputation. And in this one, it will be a little different. See here, right? So values are changing based on what imputation method we are using, okay? And this is a simple KNN model-based imputation. Other model-based imputation that you should know is known as, it uses random forest internally, okay? So you have to install a package called missing pi if you don't have this. And then from missing pi, you have to call something known as miss forest, okay? So call miss, miss forest, I'm reading the data every time again, the reason being I want to use the main data only. And then you say imputer.fit transform, give your data, and this is how your X imputed looks like, okay? So it also running multiple address. And now this is your X imputed. You will see that this is, let me convert it to a data frame so that it's easy to view, right? Okay. So you will see that the values are not different. So fifth value here, how much guys? One, two, I'm just comparing one value. So here missing forest tells you 13.16. Okay. Uh, KNN tells you 12.5. Okay. This one tells you one, two, three, four, five, seven point eight, right? Seven point eight, I think. Yeah. And this one tells you 31. So you see if I'm changing the, uh, you know, imputation technique, how the values are changing. Okay. So this is your, uh, it uses random forest internally. Now, if it uses random forest internally, then you no need to bother about outliers. You no need to bother about extreme bias or extreme variance because random forest will take care of that. And hence, many scenarios, this is very, very useful. In K means, uh, sorry, in KNN, if you are using, right, you need to tune your number of neighbors, you need to be aware of how my data is, and many other things, okay? So every, every algorithm or every method has some pros and cons. For example, if I talk of mice-based, right, so it may be sometimes computationally expensive if your data set, set is huge. Sometimes you don't know what is the right strategy to club the uh, you know, imputed values, right? And for uh, this basic additive imputer, this also computationally expensive. You don't know which model will work good, right? That is another challenge here. Of course, you can do the tuning. You can run in loop and check. But again, performance may be an issue, okay? But these uh, techniques do much better than your normal uh, mean, median mode imputation or list-wise deletion, okay? So having said of list-wise deletion, let's see how to do that simply in Python. List-wise deletion is nothing but if you see any one empty value, delete the entire data. So here, my data I'm importing again will look like this, okay? Original my data. But here I'm saying my data dot drop and a axis is equal to zero. And then if I see my data, right, you will see that some rows are completely dropped. Even if there is one empty value, that row is completely dropped. What is the disadvantage with this approach? As I was discussing in theory, you lose the records, which means you, you are snatching the power of machine learning algorithm to learn the pattern. What is the good thing? Not much headache. You are simply doing it and it will be very, very easy to do. Okay. This is known as list-wise deletion. This is a simple one. Hence, I have kept it here. Suppose you want to do a basic mean median mode imputation. Then what you might be doing is simply from SKLearn, you take simple imputer. Okay and you initialize simple imputer using, here I'm saying a strategy mean, I can say it medium, or I can say it most frequent as mode, and I can simply fit transform on this, 
and you will see that it is imputed. Again, the fifth value is different because this time it's taking mean. If I say to take median, this will be changed. If I say to take most frequent, which is nothing but mode, okay, it will be changing. Okay. So what is happening here is your values, right? Your values will change based on your strategy and your values will change based on what you are passing, but this is a simple imputation. So I have discussed the different flavors of imputation guys, right from iterative imputer to your, uh, how do you do the mice imputation? How do you do the model based imputation? How do you do the simple like list wise and mean median mode imputation? One more imputation technique is left that is known as deck imputation. And this I want to give you as homework because this is very similar to what happens in KNN and what happens in model based imputation. I have written some dummy code, uh, pseudo code here, right? Just to give you some guidance of what you have to do. You have to find the nearest neighbor based on features of your choice. For example, now I have three features. You can take only two features and choose the nearest neighbor if you want, or you can use all the three features. You can impute using simple imputer, not make it complex. Let's impute using simple imputer only and run through loop for all missing value on columns so that you get the final result as imputed data set. Okay. So if you do this one thing, guys, and if you follow this notebook that I will upload in my Google Drive, right? You are almost covered with everything available in Python from imputation point of view. Okay. So just keep in mind this miss forest because it uses random forest. Keep in mind your uh, uh, iterative imputer because that is very useful for practical purposes. Keep in mind your mice. Mice means mice forest in Python. That is also useful. Okay. And then some simple ones. So guys, please drop me a comment. How did you like this video? And drop me the answer of your uh, solution for tech imputation. Okay. I will see how different people are approaching that. Okay. Give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video. I will see you all in the next video. Till then wherever you are, stay safe and take care.